Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, go, looking back, uh, obviously a really good team win uh, on Saturday night and, and went through a lot of adversity and, and stayed the course and stayed in the fight and uh, found a way to get a couple of stops in the, in the fourth quarter on defense and forced a turnover and um, did enough to get Chris into field goal range. And like we talked on Saturday night, Chris very confident guy right now and it was fun to watch him go with confidence and, and bang that through and then get the final stop so uh we'll meet with the kids today the players today but uh, you know the margin for error in college football is really small uh, i mean it is it is razor thin um between winning and losing and um that's why i'm so proud of the guys for staying in the fight uh like they did because uh, it wasn't going great at times but uh, we stayed in the fight and, and found a way and um happy we were able to get that done and now we've got to turn our attention to houston um another road trip third third out of our four weeks in this stretch uh afternoon game but uh it'll be a little warmer down there than what we're been accustomed to so we've got to get uh uh, acclimated to that and, and playing a day game, get acclimated to that. But uh, uh, they've won two of their last three. I thought they played really well uh, in the win against uh, Utah, and I've got tons of respect like you guys do for Coach Fritz and, and uh, what he's accomplished every place he's been, and, and I know he's going to get it done at Houston. Let me start with uh, how are you doing? Yeah, you're, you're I, I'm doing I'm doing well, thanks, Fitz. I, I think it's some virus or something probably Saturday and a little bit of Sunday. Um, but I felt good this morning getting up, so all is good. How's the team in terms of health? Um, you know, we'll find out. We'll probably miss some guys uh, early part of the week. Um, Asa will. Asa Newsom, we lost him for the season, uh, unfortunately, um, with an injury. Um, but um, some other guys that uh, are probably hit and miss, but wouldn't rule anybody else out. But uh, – we're, we're down a little bit at linebacker, losing Bo and Asa uh, for the year. Some young guys have to be able to step up, and, and we're going to have to do some things with our package to um, help that position out. Uh, you mentioned Houston's done some things well. The two games they've won, what exactly have you seen from them? You know, when they played KU at KU, they turned the ball over and got out of hand. When they played TCU at TCU, they didn't turn it over. When they played Utah – at home, they didn't turn over and they won. And there, there's, it's not any magic potion. You don't turn the football over and you play good defense, and I think they're playing good defense, um, you have an opportunity to be successful. They've been playing a couple of quarterbacks the last few weeks. This week they, they went uh, with one in particular. I thought he played really well, um, really hurt Utah with the, with the quarterback run aspect of it. Uh, and he also has a strong enough arm to beat you in the throwing game. But, uh, you know, we'll prepare for either of the quarterbacks, potentially Donovan Smith, who, who I think at uh, Wells recruited at Tech, is uh, on the roster uh, and has played some this year. And we may see uh, Donovan Smith as well. But, um, um, no, they're, they're running the football well and playing good defense. Going one and zero seems pretty simple, but not every team does it, or else everyone would be undefeated. What's been the key these last four games, given that one and zero mentality? Where does that mentality come from, and just how has this team adhered to that mentality? Yeah, you know we kind of broke this season up into three parts, and we had their five games, and then we had a break, and then we had this four game stretch, um, and. We never looked ahead once we got into that four-game stretch. We had our open week. I thought we were able to get our bodies healthy and, and get some things accomplished um, and then really attacked it one day at a time with um, you got to win Monday to get to Tuesday and you got to attack Tuesday to get to Wednesday and you got to continue to build um, each, each day and have some of our Tuesday practices not been the best accurate, but we've gotten better on Wednesday and fixed some problems, got better on Thursday, and then – I would say our player ownership, and you can ask the guys about it. Uh, I think that uh, I know that uh, the ownership that the guys took, uh, especially through the adversity we we faced at Colorado, having a lead, losing the lead, and, and being down in that kind of an environment in the fourth quarter, and, and just watching those guys help each other, both sides of the ball, um, uh, that really that that helped us a bunch in that game in particular. Um, and then, uh, you know, the adversity that we've faced and that the guys have faced during this four-game stretch or the three of the four so far, 
uh, I think has, has made us really grow as a football team. Also, the same vein, you talk, talk about winning games, and this is a team that's been able to come back and be, be victorious. And yeah. uh, just how you, the, the statistics show that this is a pretty decent team. Just how good is this team right now? Well, we've been down in most games that we've had, and we get down 7 nothing against Arizona. We get down 13-7, I think, against Oklahoma State. We were down in, in Colorado and so on and so forth. And uh, our guys haven't panicked, and um, our guys stayed the course and stayed in the fight, and um, that's something that uh, – uh, we've been preaching. The older guys have been preaching that uh, kind of one play, one one play at a time. The next play, we can't do anything about what has happened. Now let's let's move forward. Uh, same thing happened this week. We had we had a a, a lead and lost the lead, uh, and then uh, found a way to keep chipping away and and, um, and end up getting the lead and then not relinquishing it. And uh, uh, that that's a collective effort by. Um, Coaches, support staff, our, our players, our leadership. That uh, it's, uh, it's a credit to our players, really, uh, that they've stayed the course when we've had adversity. What do you like the most about your offense right now, and where specifically would you like to make some more strides? Um, balance is one thing that uh, we've strived for, uh, to be able to throw the ball effectively on any down and distance. Um, that. Um, has been improving. Um, so the balance is where we're, we're getting better. The area that we need to improve in is we've been in too many third and seven and eight plus. And for us to be able to be really successful, uh, you're going to have to convert third downs, but you need them at third and medium or less um, so that you can you know, have your whole arsenal. We were able to hit one run, I think, on third and 12 last, uh, last Saturday with Dylan, um, which you, know, you don't have happen very often. You can pop them on third and five and get some runs as well as throw a quick game, as well as throw drop back. That's an area we, we have to be better. We always talk about win early to win late. We've got to win early, meaning we've got to win the early downs on first and second down so we don't get into those third and longs. He's playing right now. How much does Damian Eli Leo mean to your defense? Yeah, huge. He's. He's one of the, the best leaders we have on defense as well. Uh, he's played a lot of football for us. Um, he, he made the play on the safety. A lot of guys made the play on the safety. Uh, we kind of we hit our fits and really hit them fast. But that was a pivotal point of the game. And uh, he's playing at a high level. He's understanding what, what offenses are doing. He's a really smart, smart player and, and helping out the other defensive linemen of things that he sees or things that he hears um, and, and bringing them to the sideline. Uh, but uh, it's fun to watch Damien play at the high level he is because he's playing at an all-conference level. Chris, you guys have really relied on the, the blitz in key defensive situations, especially late in games this season. Why is that? Why do you think that's been a good strategy for you guys? Um, well, we have guys that can rush the passer uh, at, at defensive end and, and uh, even inside, um, but it helps those guys when we can bring some interior pressure because then they're getting some more one-on-ones. Uh, and uh, I think Coach Klannerman did a really good job uh, this past weekend, uh, of, and we've done it a couple of times, of holding something till later and not showing everything you have uh, in the first three quarters, but saving something for the end that maybe a, a, an offense hasn't seen yet, and we were able to do that on Saturday night uh, with a couple of you know what we would call weak, weak blitzes, and we'd been blitzing off the strong side the whole game. And then we brought it from the weak side um, to try to maybe confuse or, or get them to turn the protection the other way. And that, that, was, that happened for us so that uh, uh, we made him get rid of the ball a little bit earlier. And that's a credit to our staff and Coach Kleinerman for kind of holding that in his pocket. How good do you think Marquis Siegel see in the field right now? He sees it really well. Um, he's always seen the, seen the game really well. It's not even the field. He just sees the game really well. He knows what top plays people run based on splits, based on formations, based on backfield sets, based on a lot of different things. Um, and where Siegs is doing such a great job is sharing those thoughts with uh, whether it's younger or inexperienced guys that are playing for us of what to look for. Uh, and he's always one on the sideline that's continuing to 
uh, encourage offensive guys, encur encouraging D linemen to keep the pass rush going. This was a week where it was hard to get sacks because the Daniels kid is such a talented guy, and it's, he, he just gets rid of the ball, or he's got he's strong enough to get um, get out of uh, of of a. Uh, uh, an arm tackle, so to speak. And so um, Sieg's doing a great job of being a great leader, but also um, commanding his spot. One more thing. You guys have faced <clears throat> a couple teams now who've really gone out of their way to try and eliminate DJ Giddens in the running game. How do you think your offense has handled that? Um, I would say that's an area we need to improve on. Um, and the, the difference, we were able to crack a few big runs on Saturday, and we didn't do that as well against West Virginia. But I know DJ got one for 50. Dylan got one for 30 or something somewhere in there. We were able to crack a few of those. We were able to utilize quarterback run, which was a big deal for us this week um, to get Avery back going. Um, but um, some of it is communication and some of it is technique. And uh, give give KU uh, a lot of credit for their for their scheme, for their plan, for for how how well their guys played. When we struggled, it was as simple as our technique was really poor. And so we've got we have to be able to shore that up as we get into November. We've got to play with better technique across the board. I know uh, the Houston season probably hasn't gone as great as they want it to be but you know they still have some of those same I guess identity points that a Willie Fritz team has with their the fact that they're competitive down the stretch uh what makes a, a Willie Fritz team tough to play uh, from your experience well he's, it's just well coached and they're not going to beat themselves and um um you know I just I just kind of watch what I've watched through the film and you see a team early in the season that was trying to find an identity and then as the season has gone, has found that identity as far as being able to rush the football, being able to stop people from running the football um, and, and playing really well within the systems. And, and trust me, I know how hard it is to implement a system. It doesn't always show up right away. Um, but um, if you're a really good leader and a really good motivator like Willie is and you keep preaching the same thing and having the same messaging, all of a sudden it starts to stick more and more. And you can see that uh, – uh, over the last handful of weeks, how much more confidently they're playing. Uh, Avery Johnson with his ability to recover from some of the mistakes that happened during the game and keep playing at a high level. How yeah. has his mindset changed from week one to now? Well, it doesn't change, in my opinion. He's a, an aggressive kid. He's a competitor. He's calm. He doesn't get rattled when things happen. Uh, I think I said it on Saturday. Both quarterbacks – are phenomenal players and both are going to make mistakes when you play that aggressively and um you know I, I i'm never i'm never going to rein avery back in let him play because that's when he's at his best is when he's playing free and not worried about making a mistake he's his own worst critic um as far as when he does make a mistake um, but i also know that i'll keep giving him the football because you want it in his his, his hands Chris Tennant has had his ups and downs in his career, but he's made some big kicks even prior to that yep. kick on Saturday. But specifically, do you remember where he was at after the TCU game two years ago when he missed a couple of kicks and and then he was essentially yeah. benched? Um, I'll, I think it'd be better for Chris to sell to tell that story. Um, but I know it was probably a low point for him. Um, but the makeup of Chris Tennant and the competitor of Chris Tennant, and I'm telling you guys, that kid's going to be one of the most successful guys in life. And I've seen him grow from the time he's gotten here till uh, up until this last year and absolutely love what he has made of himself, what he has endured, and he's coming out on the other side. Um, but I think it would be a better story told by Chris and uh, I said it uh, on Saturday, I believe in that kid. He knows I believe in him, and I've said that to him on many occasions. But watching him the last month kick the ball uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays or the main days we – or Mondays and Thursdays, the main days we – Tuesday, Thursday, the main days we kick him, he's kicking at a really high level. And it's fun when you, can, when you hear the pop and you see it come off his foot of uh, how confident he is. Uh, the last, I think, four games now that you've really switched the turnover margin around. Has there any been any one 
one thing there that's stood out or is it just yeah. you've gotten better yeah arnie i think they come in bunches sometimes and and i think that um you know when when you're struggling with it you're pressing so much and all of a sudden one happens and then you get another one and uh, make no mistake, our, our success is we're in the plus category. Um, not only we're in the plus category on turnovers, but we're in the plus category on fourth down conversions, whether we're going for them or we're trying to defend them. And over the last X amount of weeks, um, we've been in the plus category on both of those. And those are just like turnovers. You know, if, if we're going for it on fourth and Fourth and one against Arizona on the first drive, and we don't, and we get it stuffed right back at us. We might as well have just fumbled the thing. Um, so the fourth down conversions and the true turnover margin are things that we emphasize, and our kids know are, are, are so valuable and so important in, in to being a successful team. Your tight ends have done a, an excellent job of, of carving out space, especially in the end zone. Yeah. What I guess. Is it, is it just the fact that they're just big-bodied guys? What, what goes into being able to be able to do that so well? Yeah, um, chemistry with the quarterback, uh, running really crisp and good routes, um, being all 6'5 and 6'6 six, six, uh, with big bodies, and the threat of quarterback run and the threat of the running backs. You know, when you have to put more guys up, you can play man-to-man -man on, on, on a wide receiver and either you win or you don't win. When you're playing man to man on a tight end, and that that tight end is also in the run fit and is blocking to show run, which we did with Oakley, which we did with Ancio on his touchdown, it's hard. I know from a defense perspective, coach he blocked, he, he he was in he was in it, and all of a sudden they release. That's really difficult, and they have really good timing and patience to do that. But it's been fun to see. Um, you know, but we've got to be close to leading the country in touchdowns with tight ends. It's fun. It's fun to watch because we added another two on on Saturday. So they're playing really well. I mean, you, you've talked about in the past, and then especially after the game on Saturday, how close of friends you are with, with yep. Coach Leipold. How has that developed? I mean, that has to be fairly unique around the country. Um, rivals being well, being that close. Um, you know, we both had to work our way up. More than anything, uh, we both worked our tail off to be in the position that we're in. Nobody handles us anything. And I think there's great respect of knowing how hard it is to win at any level. And you win at the lower level. You're also not just the football coach. You're, you're a lot of hats. Um, and so I think that's where the respect starts for sure is the fact that we both have done it uh, at a high, high level at a level below and there's a chip on both of our shoulders that you know can you do it at the at the higher level and um hey i'll be honest with you Deion sanders is not much different coach prime you know he was at jackson state and i'm sure and i and i've talked to prime about this about you know that that chip on your shoulder of can you can you do it at the next level well football's football and i've been saying that since december whatever it was of, of 2018 when i sat in here that football is football and uh, if you can motivate and, and you can teach and you can um, be there for guys and, and uh, rally the troops, you can coach this game. And uh, Lance has done that at a really high level and, and uh, just appreciate some of the talks that we've had. You probably just described Willie too, did you not? Absolutely, 100%. Competed against Willie, he doesn't like it, but we competed against Willie in the <laughs> FCS championship game couple times when he was at, at Sam Houston and uh, um, watching his, his evolution from junior college to what he did at Central Missouri to what he did at Sam to what he's gone boom, 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 step after step. And I was so excited. He, I remember sending him a note when he got the job at Houston, you know, uh, for him to get that opportunity. He earned it. I mean, man, did he earn it for what he did at Tulane and what he did at Sam and what he did at all the other places he was at. But to have that opportunity – um, to go coach Power Four football, he's one of the best coaches uh, in college football, and um, uh, you can see his his prints all over that program. And and uh, um, they're they're going to be they're already good, and they're going to continue to improve and improve. Wanted to ask you what the tight ends about Ancio. Has he taken even another step in the last couple of weeks or so? Yeah, and part of that is we've been down Lofton. Now Lofton played a little bit, and we hope to get Lofton back even more. Um, you take all those practice reps. 
We've held Oakley back a little bit. We've held Swanee back a little bit. Swanee because he's a vet and Oak because of some uh, injuries that he's had. So he's taken more and more of those reps. Um, Andrew Metzger is in the same boat, just hasn't been able to, to crack the lineup, but he's taken all those reps and he's getting better and better. And so when you do that and you go against Mott and Stuff and Jordan Allen and Cheedy and all those guys – you get better because you got to compete your tail off at practice. And so I've been really pleased with Will, and I can see the confidence growing with him. Coach, when you recruit as high as you do in-state, how important is continuing to get those wins in the rivalry game? Um, you know, it, it's important for a lot of reasons, not just the recruiting. That's a piece of it. Now, Taylor Bratt was in here. That's the biggest piece of it, uh, the, the former players the alums, the fan base. I know how big of a game that is um, for uh, the K-Staters. And um, uh, none of us in this building ever want to let them down. Now, um, you know, you still got to play really good football and you can't get caught up in all that stuff um, that you have to execute at a high level. And um, um, we executed at a high level for a good chunk of that game and then we executed really poorly. And if when you execute poorly, I don't care who you play, uh, you're going to get exposed. And, and we had some things that we have to address that uh, I thought KU really exposed us on. And could you kind of describe what the moment was like in the locker room for those Kansas kids to walk away with the win there? You know, I, I, I won't just say the Kansas kids. The moment in that locker room for everybody associated with our program, with the work you put in, as well as the adversity you face to have that opportunity to win that game, win any game at home, but win that game at home, uh, is pretty special, and, and I, I'd hate to just signal out uh, the Kansas kids. I know how important it was to them, but I also know how important it was to everybody in that locker room that that um, battled that night. Can you tell me about his blitz and hitting the next gear on his pursuit on that final defensive yeah. play? How good was that by VJ Payne? It, I think he, I know he hit like 21 miles an hour or so. He was rolling, and VJ can fly, um, and he was probably mad he didn't get the sack. So he had to chase him down. Um, but uh, when when I saw him coming and he, and he and Austin were somewhat clean, they got bumped, but they were somewhat clean, and I saw him scrambling out to the right, and I saw V.J. chasing. Not very many people are going to outrun V.J. Payne, and uh, we were end up, end up getting the pursuit there, but uh, great play by V.J. And V.J.'s playing – uh, at a high level, and, and I know there's more in VJ, and I and I tell him that because I truly believe in that kid. He played as a true freshman in a Big 12 championship game. How far has he come um, with his experience and his level of play and his awareness, um, and and how much it means to him? Uh, that play was a huge play, and I think it's going to even continue to uh, add confidence to VJ's game.